This head impact is well above anywhere that would start playing this music, unless this is the way it's designed to be started, which seems unnecessarily painful. You had at least five seconds while this dude's metal hand was sparking on the asphalt to get this gun and start doing some damage. What were you waiting for? If Charlie has a robotic arm with this kind of strength, why was this ever even a fight? Car birth. I guess drift mode is cool and all, but why did these other three cars let it happen? I thought it might be because they wanted him to escape because they knew the Trojan arm was already in there. Except later they unload a car top Uzi on the guy. Simply pulling forward would have been so much easier. The Kings man the Furious. Not that they'd have much chance against all this weaponry, but are the London cops too busy looking for Banksy to do something about this? <laughs> okay, fine, that's awesome. Yeah, but what if there were four cars? That Merlin and Eggsy forgot about this cyborg arm is bad enough, but if this thing can move on its own, why didn't it just strangle Eggsy when it had the chance? That's it. This metal arm has everything it needs to plug an open port and download all the Kingsman info ever? If that's the case, what a stupid way to go about getting it. All you need is the arm in the car, right? You don't even need to wait for Eggsy to let you in. Just break the windshield, take out the driver, and be done with it. No worries, Eggsy, just leave that manhole open. When some poor child falls to their death, we will forgive you. I mean, your fancy suit smelled bad and stuff, but how could you be bothered? This just backs up my philosophy that relationships that start with anal sex are for life. This is what Eggsy decided was important enough to jump into a sewer to attend. Like, it would've made sense if it was he and his girlfriend's anniversary or something, but a f***ing birthday party? Last time, yeah, I was wrecked, man. Yeah, but that's because you're a lightweight, Jamal. <laughs> Sorry to mellow this bruv love, but that wasn't really that funny. I haven't seen someone overreact this much since Jamie Foxx turned electric blue because Spider-Man forgot his name. <laughs> no, no, babe, I'm, I'm good, not for me, thank you. Whoa, oh, what's man. going on, man? I'm meeting her parents for the first time tomorrow night. Tomorrow night would have been a much better reason to jump into the sewer than this one. Also, why are you worried about drinking tonight when you're visiting her parents tomorrow night? While I enjoy this super over-the-top villain's lair, I've got to wonder, how do you build a place like this without it ever showing up in a satellite photo? I just think it's really important for new recruits to understand the history of the Golden Circle. Roll joints. Your old pal Charles has messed up. That's all I'm gonna tell you, because that's all you need to know, so put him in the mincer, okay? Okay, fine. Movie admits reasons because it wants to do some meat grinding. But even so, how does this work? The guy who brought in the new recruit is untrustworthy enough to kill, but the guy he brought in is somehow okay? Seems like that should be fruit of the poison tree, or patty of the poison beef, or something. No. People who are running away in a panic don't stop and do a slow burn to see what might be coming after them. Scared people are like my nostrils after eating Nashville hot chicken. They never stop running. Not that I'm complaining, because honestly, this bestie burger is already a bit gross for my taste, but if a live human went into this mincer, it would not only be kicking out meat, it would be kicking out clothes and hair and shit. Look, I still don't know how these holograms are sitting in the correct places at the table they are not physically at, but as we've seen time and again, these movies are dicks when it comes to explaining hologram societies. We saved the world. And wasn't the world completely changed by most of the wealthy elite getting their heads blown off? And all of those millions of people who died? Did the world snap back to its original self in a year? When you electrocuted him, you damaged his implant. Instead of his head exploding, he only lost an arm and his vocal cords. Somehow, this one-armed man was able to escape Valentine's secret lair in the mountains after everyone had left. And weren't all the planes in some underground bunker that would be impossible to fly planes out of without codes and air traffic controllers? Also, wow, good thing all the major arm arteries are in the left arm, or old Charlie Boar here might have bled out. Welcome to Golden Circle. Cannabis Queen casually coerces co-worker cannibalism. And the Bluetooth logo is his initials. Really? You pulled up an animation of the initials coming together to form a logo? And left up previous windows and tabs with information you used several courses ago? Would a little tab maintenance kill you? Sure, you need fingerprint authentication to even open a car door, but this menagerie of death opens with a random swipe? <laughs> oh, come on. You mean he can just put on these spy glasses and suddenly get tapped into Eggsy's feed without a password or retinal scan or other Kingsman knowing about it? What are we supposed to think Eggsy saw here? Certainly that level of firepower just completely shut down the feet, which likely means he just saw the screen go dark and really shouldn't be all that concerned. Also, this is a point the movie tries to have both ways when just a few seconds later, these guys are none the wiser as each of them is taken out. If your missile warning system goes off a split second before you explode, you went with the wrong missile warning system company. Considering this bowling alley is high tech enough to have automated scoring, why are these pins just sitting here and not being reset? Is she waiting for Elton John to reset them? Whir, buzz, spin, slide, turn! Are we impressed yet? Points for strength, but shouldn't they be a tad bit concerned about accuracy? I'm only alive because my address wasn't on the database with the agents. And why are the addresses of the agents on that database anyway? Even if secret organizations do store addresses this way, would they make those accessible from a computer inside a taxi? This sounds like something you'd have to Mission Impossible to get. Also, this means Poppy decided to coordinate an attack on all these agents' houses and basically hoped they'd all be home. Luckily, nearly all of them were. And too bad she didn't have a disgruntled statesman in her corner, because she didn't know about a whole other secret crime-fighting group that could stop her. We're from Kingsman. We'd like to buy some wine. 
And use tasting room number three, please. So everything was on that database except the Kingsman's Doomsday Protocol location? I mean, sure, you don't want to put anything sensitive on the database that the bad guys might use against you. So good call there. Remember this? <laughs> yeah, how could I forget? Um, I did. Quit treating the audience like they are uber fans of the first movie. Is it too much to ask for a sequel that can be enjoyed on its own? What's with hiding this clue? It was in a safe behind a magic pendant opening door. Just leave a note with a phone number. Ten times out of ten, if someone has drunk enough whiskey to see this, they would be too drunk to find it or even comprehend what they are looking at. In case you confused it with Kentucky Iran. Is this a standard issue spy watch that both agencies use even though they are not even aware of each other? How the hell do they know how to use it then? Harry! Harry! Three. Story checked out. You mean Tequila was going to kill Harry before they figured out their story was true? And even if he wasn't going to do it, why would Catwoman walk in and yell stop like she was saving his life? Ah yes, you remember the place where Harry was killed in the last movie? It was Kentucky, of course. The place where a secret American spy outfit exactly like the Kingsman just so happens to be. Oh, so this is some next level Kentucky bullshit about to happen here. First, I'm getting a crazy spike of extreme low frequency waves. Extreme low frequency waves? What does that even mean? Why are you monitoring for them and why is their presence an emergency that demands an immediate escort? Second, your helicopter just happens to land immediately after Van Valentine walks away and they don't even see you? And finally... We developed our alpha gel technology for our own agents in the event of a headshot. The gel protects the brain. Protect the brain? You mean what's left of the brain, right? The problem isn't that the brain needs protecting. The problem is that the brain is currently located outside of its original container. We use nanites, microbots, to repair tissue damage. And it repairs tissue damage how? Does it contain Prometheus? This is essentially the cure for death itself, right? Why hasn't someone in this movie made a trillion dollars selling this technology? You're late! And that will have no consequences whatsoever. Can't he just be on time? What does it f***ing matter? Stop with the you're late bullshit in movies, assholes! Until you get rid of the perimeter landmines, I'll keep wearing a suit, thank you very much. How exactly was that vest supposed to protect him from a landmine? Was he crawling? Another wide view and flyover of the compound. This movie could have been under two hours if it cut back on the grandiose landscape porn. If I wanted to fly over the countryside, I'd go to Disney and ride Sora. I'm champagne. Jesus Christ, this movie is starting to feel like a Bob Hope Christmas special. Also, Jeff Bridges? If you count Sir Elton, that's five Oscar winners in this movie. As I learned watching Sesame Street, sometimes the best place to find Oscars is slumming in the trash. Also, also, a place that holds whiskey in high regard would never use the codename Champagne. Jog on, you hoser. We need to recreate a shock or trauma from his past to trigger his memory. What? You mean you don't have a special gel or microchip or Criterion Collection DVD of the King's Speech that will help trigger his memory? We gotta waste time with this movie that's nearly two and a half hours. And yeah, we'd send the fact that something so easy would fix his memory, but we'd be nice about it. These art supplies are unmoved, as am I. Well, if you save the world, you know what that means. Man, Eggsy should really look into getting an anal sex rewards card. With enough points, he could get a free popcorn. You know, bro. Do everything was supposed to be bigger in America. Goes on your finger. The surveillance tracker is in the tip. And we had no choice but to make it look like a condom for some easy jokes. The hand is not a mucous membrane, Eggsy. Really moving? The only way this incredibly advanced spy agency can track someone is with a finger condom that has to be gynecologically inserted. And what if she's not into you? What if you needed to track a man? The movie has less defined sense of decency and maturity than a Logan Paul video. Poppy, would you pass your sugar, please? Okay. But it's really bad for you. That's why I keep whole bowls of sugar here, despite the rant that I'm about to go on about it. Don't get me started on tobacco and alcohol. You peddle that stuff and you're in the Fortune 500. Wait, is this movie for recreational drug use or against it? Why is the villain making so much sense? And we do not break the rules. Which is why I have invested in robots, because they are so much more reliable and trustworthy than human beings. But yet, I still kept human employees around, for some reason. And what's the deal with this angel character, anyway? The movie made it seem like he'd be important in some way. And now he's already being fed to the mechanical dogs. You know what? I'm busting for a pee, actually. <laughs> you can do it on me if you want. This is the kind of sexy and disgusting that I expect from the Steel Dossier, not over-the-top spy movies. Tents at festivals, no matter how opulent, do not have indoor plumbing. This means she's part of the Golden Circle, right? Why does she get to hang out at a music festival during a time when her boss is about to unleash her big plan? And by the way, this is exactly why you don't mark your henchmen with easily identifiable markings. Worst POV ever. So it's 8.49 p.m. in Sweden right now, which is six hours ahead of Louisville. But Kentucky must be going through one of their trademark polar nights right now, because that would mean it's 2.49 p.m. there. What, did he find a 24-hour pet store in rural Kentucky? Forgetting the fact that the time is f***ed anyway, it's nearly nighttime. And Harry is still sleeping when he brings this dog in. This goes on for some time. You look like some f*** it looking for an eye f it. There's no sigh loud enough to express my irritation with this bullshit. Sure, we need another Harry teaches an asshole a lesson in a bar scene so that we can see that he's back. But does it have to be the most rootin' tootin'est stereotypical redneck f face imaginable? Also, this brings up another point. You never talk about your spy sh in a bar, especially a bar with so many dickheads in it.
This is actually a pretty clever play off the scene in the original, but like almost everything else in this movie, it depends on your memory of the first movie for it to even work. This is a 90 minute movie bloated to almost two and a half hours by a severe case of sequelitis swelling. Manners maketh man. Let me translate that for you. Thank God native Kentuckian Pedro Pascal saves the day for the southern stereotypes in this movie. Oh, wait. As cool as a retractable whip might seem, exactly what vortex is that whip disappearing into? Golden Circle proudly presents... Like most megalomaniacal villains, Poppy somehow has control over the American airwaves to override every channel Joker style to deliver this message. Some of you are already infected. This is exactly like the Tim Burton Joker plan. Just switch cosmetics with drugs and it's the same thing. Breathing becomes impossible. Luckily, Poppy had this perfectly timed to the second to prove her point. What have you done to me, you f***ing bitch? I guess that's funny because it's Elton John saying it. What a shocker. Bruce Greenwood is playing the president again. My guess is that this is either leftover footage from 13 Days or from National Treasure 2. Easiest paycheck ever. Fox News isn't comparing Poppy Adams to Hillary Clinton in this scene. Step up five, three for madness. What I'm proposing is we appear to agree to her demands to prevent global panic and then let the junkie scum go down in flames. Good God, what a psychopath. I know that's the point. It's a cartoon president making a cartoon decision. But even a psychopathic president would know that letting all these people die wouldn't end the war on drugs. Still, absolutely no one brings up this point in the movie, and that's a shame. We're not talking about a handful of hostages. We could be looking at the deaths of hundreds of millions worldwide. You know, like a year ago when that same thing happened and everybody forgot about it. Who are you? I'm here to collect this antidote. Was this how the lab was going to give representatives of their countries the antidote? That this works for even the briefest moment is worthy of a sin. And the fact that Poppy has drones that are going to deliver the antidote anyway is worthy of another. Galahad, come in! Yes, Harry's butterfly effect distracts him, but did he lose total awareness? Why isn't he answering them? No, Harry, you gotta shut the doors, please. Why did they even need Harry on this mission? And why did they need him to do this when Halle Berry can close the lab's f***ing doors remotely? So he gains full control of the lift, and instead of just bringing them back up to the top, he just spins them really fast? Whee! What? His magic lasso has an electric slicing setting, apparently? What else can it do? If Aquaman sits on it, will he admit that he's afraid of dying? Also, what exactly is the plan here? To cut a hole that somehow lets the whip out enough to reach all the way up and cut the tension lines? So that the machine can plummet into a ravine? How exactly is this helping? What the? Since when are they wearing parachutes? And why? I swear to God, this movie has conjured up more magically appearing items than J.K. Rowling. This gunslinging is actually pretty damn creative and fun, but there's no possible way one of these golden circle jerks hasn't had time to reload their automatic weapon and take this lone gunman out for good. Can these Gatlin guns seriously not penetrate the stone wall that Harry and Eggsy are taking cover behind? These things are super powerful, right? Oh ye of little face! Come on, movie. Another magic out? At this point, we can just call this Ex Machina the movie and be done with it. First, I've got to find a way to get back up to that lab and retrieve more antidote. Your super secret rendezvous point was within eyesight of the lab. No wonder they found you. In fact, here's an extra sin for them not finding you sooner. If you ever wanted to do more than this... Look, HB, you're the one that took the part. And I assume they sent you the script, so this one's on you. Email in from Poppy from a senior partner at the firm. Their coordinates. Yeah, to the facility in Italy, not her secret hideout. It says it plain as day in the email. Why would she arrange pickup at her headquarters or send the coordinates there ever? I know the president decided not to cave to Poppy's demands, but did he really commission the production of all these cages? Or was there a cage warehouse somewhere that finally got its big break? Are you the banana man? Princess of Sweden, who I might remind you is a princess, is somehow in level two of the poison drug state without someone rushing her to a hospital. Poppy, you expecting a lawyer tonight? Poppy somehow didn't tell her gun-toting henchman that her lawyer was going to show up tonight. Don't. Move. You had one job, Minesweeper. Also, I thought landmines blow up as soon as you step on them, and that the don't move technique we've been taught in movies is a lot. But I guess like bullets in the water and we only use 10% of our brains, this is a trope that we have to accept. Except here. Luckily, I have this. Little known fact. Luckily, I have this was actually the working title of this movie during production. Country roads. I don't know how this can be perceived as anything but a ruse, but movie's got a movie, I guess. <laughs> Did Merlin really have to die here? We've seen them single-handedly take out more goons than this before. And in about two minutes, they will take out five times this many. Why not just have Merlin hold tight, take out the guards and Poppy, then deactivate the landmine? It would literally be the least ridiculous thing in the entire movie. Also, don't worry. In the next sequel, some other country will be nearby monitoring low-level frequencies and just happen to have some mine reassimilation putty. So really, totes to NBD. Once again, henchmen decide not to go for the legs after it's clear that shooting the umbrella is not going to work. Wait a minute. Did the guy behind Harry make a noise so loud in the middle of the gunfire that Harry was able to turn around and kill that guy before he got the chance to kill him? Does anybody know how to kill people before they're detected anymore? What the hell? 
We've already seen this briefcase be a rocket launcher and a machine gun, but now there is nothing inside it. Even if I had an entire suspension bridge of disbelief, it wouldn't be enough. I guess this is funny and all. Sometimes the dark recesses of my heart won't allow it. But this is a 70-year-old recording artist pulling off a martial arts move, and my brain can't handle it either. Also, a movie uses Elton John to break the fourth wall, and I can't even muster any anger because it also broke my spirit at least an hour ago. Harry shoots a thing and it somehow works. Luckily, all bombs come in threes in this world, and this umbrella has an unlimited supply of usefulness stocked inside it. You already broke that wall, Elton. There are no walls left to break. Can we all just go home now? We've already seen a dog operate at 76%, so why wouldn't he be able to come out and play at 89%? Which gives way first, the human sternum or a stone column? Wrong answer, movie. Knowing what we know about this mechanical arm, Eggsy's chest should be a crater right now. He survives this, all of this, like the whole movie. Mechanical dog menaces Harry rather than simply killing him, which is what they've been doing the whole movie up until now. Elton X Jonica. This has been possible the whole time? The whole time? Go, Poppy! Yo, sure, give her a reason to take off the Elton John failsafe, you dick. For my mate Brandon, for Roxy, for JB, and for Merlin. Who will all somehow be alive if we ever decide to make another sequel? We are lost. So? Oh, god damn it. I mean, I didn't forget about whiskey or anything. I was just hoping the movie did. And these are trained agents who conveniently forget to agent for plot's sake. You try anything funny and I turn this thing electric. So why don't you already? I'm just gonna spend the next several minutes monologuing about your very thin and very convenient motives for wanting drug users dead. None of which is necessary, since you easily could have killed them both by now and just let the infected druggies die. I think it sounds like a bright idea. This badass gunslinging lasso twirling killer is essentially stopped by a very bright light. This is some now you see me too bullshit right here. The president actively sanctioned the deaths of hundreds of millions of people. There is no way, even with impeachment, that they would put handcuffs around the president of the United States in the White House. It's even doubtful that the president would be arrested or have to go through any legal proceedings. And there would be a great debate as to whether his decision was even illegal. Strange things are afoot at the Circle K. How is it? I know what people taste like. Somebody's poisoned the water hole! Soylent Green is made out of people. He is no dragon. Fire cannot kill a dragon. I'm the dude! You raped my sister. You murdered her. You killed her children. How did you take down Captain America? We shot him in the legs because his shield is the size of a dinner plate. <laughs> 